How's it going guys? Welcome to the FM Dugout. We're back with Sterling Albion and the British Steel Challenge Season 2, which sees us try to take the Scottish Labrokes League 1 title. So, since first episode, there's been another four league games and one Challenge Cup game. Part 1 uh, of episode 8 will have all the goals from those games. If you want to see them, go check it out. Um, so we're sitting quite nicely in the league at the moment. Uh, joint top with Airdrie on points, uh, behind on goal difference. Albeit Morton, our opponents today, have a game in hand. So today's game is huge. If we can win, then it really does show um, that we have what it takes to compete in this division. Um, especially with it being away from home as well. Um, my thoughts are that we'll probably get a narrow loss as we did against Airdrie. Um, I was feeling a little bit aggrieved that we didn't manage to draw that game, but it's just some crazy defending, certainly the second goal. And again, as I say, if you haven't seen the goals, check them out, because the second goal in that game, David Craddock, I don't know what he was doing in goals. Um, he's been dropped as a result of that, really. Um, I've gone back to Chris Smith in goals. So, yeah, today's going to be a big, big test for us. But things have been going rather well. Um, as you can see from the player stats, Liam Coogan's topping the goal scorers, 7 goals. Uh, Bruce Anderson, top rating, 7.2. Um, Lametti, actually, there as, as a top assist. So, I mean, it's pretty good from his point of view. And on that point, we did actually have a bid that came in for him from Ross County. £925 plus 40% of the next sale and a friendly. Um, now, I'm pretty sure they've got more money than that. And if we look at Lametti now, you can see his stats are starting to rise because he's he's playing regularly for us. Um, he's now actually wanted by Hibs. Um, Motherwell were sniffing around him as well. Um, <clears throat> now his value is up to 9k. And he's contracted till 2020. So certainly from a financial point of view, things should be quite secure, I would say, because nobody can really come in and steal him. Um, my hope is that he just keeps developing um, to the point at which someone else wants to, to come in for him but I mean again this isn't a Sterling Albion save this is a, a British Steel save so <clears throat> I was asked the question that you know when I might be moving on to somewhere of like Northern Ireland and Wales and to be honest I don't really have a set out plan um, I just want to see kind of how things go here take it as far as it can go um, and then evaluate my options at that point but certainly Lametti um, it's a, a glowing prospect for the club um, as a whole. There were uh, a couple of other signings that were made. Um, I should have actually just done it from here. Um, we brought in Michael McMullen at left back, formerly at Partick Thistle. Just purely because I don't think Jamie Mills is good enough at back, as a backup at this level. Um, you can see with McMullen his, um, his report, his potential uh, ability, 4 out of 5, is pretty good. Um, his physicals are good, a uh, few good mentals as well, concentration, determination, positioning, very, very good. Um, defensively, not fantastic, not that great as well, crossing-wise, but those sort of skills can be developed. He's still only 20, um, so he has been brought in really to give Petrie a bit of competition, not necessarily to be back up, um, but at the moment we're just getting his fitness up in um, the reserves. We also managed to get Josh Jeffries in, Obviously, um, living on tins of beans and toast for a few months uh, after losing his contract at Rangers has been enough to allow him to say, OK, fair enough, 160 a week um, and you'll, you'll do it. So um, quite pleased with this. I mean, I suppose there's a bit of sentiment here. One, being a Rangers fan, um, I kind of opted for him. Two, with the people save I did in Football Manager 15, I think it was, the first series on the channel, uh, Josh Jeffries was pretty good for us there, and he's certainly got some decent skills, uh, vision 11, passing 10, first touch needs improvement, long shots 15 is, is a real uh, great thing for an attacking midfielder um, to have, i am certainly seen a few goals fly in from that range from other players, so I'm hoping he will be able to do that, um, <clears throat> his natural fitness is pretty good, he's fairly quick, um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's not too bad. He, he's played one game, uh, had 6.4, not particularly good, but he wasn't really fit at that point. So again, he's another one who is is getting his fitness up in the development side. So the other bit of news, I guess, is that I have opted to go for 
the four two three one narrow um and wide now. Um partly down to Carlo Monte being injured. Um I just didn't feel Ross Meldrum was really cutting it. Scott Ferguson wasn't playing that well on the wing either. And we've got some really strong players, Bruce Anderson, um Easton, um I've got Jeffries in there at the moment. Uh, that shouldn't really be the case. Um got Lametti as well. Now he isn't as comfortable in that role, but he's playing fairly well. Um, and we're going to keep training him in that attacking midfielder role just so that we can keep Hodge and Dixon in the ball winning midfielders slightly more defensive uh, as I say Petrie and McMillan will be told to get further forward giving us the width giving us four across the middle effectively so um, it's, it seems to be working at the moment I'm fairly happy with it um, I was looking at dropping Tong Lang for this game because he made a pretty big mistake in one of the games but um, yeah I think I will actually drop him for Stephen Welsh uh, anyway so today's game will be quite the challenge for us um, Airdrie away to Albion Rovers a nice little North Lanarkshire derby for them hopefully Albion Rovers can trip them up but really at the moment we should just be concerned with our own performances more than lining up where the 4-4-2 the last match they won 4-1 um, a way to beat her head um, and we managed to match that when uh, when we played them in the Iron Brew Challenge Cup so yeah it should be interesting they've actually signed Cammy Ballantyne um, utilising him in midfield which is, is quite interesting they've also got Serge Atayaki um, I'm guessing he went on a free transfer yeah oh no he's uh, on loan from Rangers rather than a free transfer and Andy Murdoch from Rangers as well so a few names Craig Moore as well I think from Motherwell yeah um, quite a good looking player there five goals in five games so today will be a challenge so let's get into it without any further delays I, mean, I didn't really expect to be sitting um, joint top at this stage uh, but you know things change very quickly I mean for it to be only five games in I'm probably reading too much into it um, more to and a draw written all over it I'd be quite happy with a draw to be honest I would um, right let's see what can we say huge underdogs that gets everyone feeling nice and relaxed and then build them back up again really not changing any of my team talks at all it seems to be working so why change it um, we actually are going with an attacking mentality from the beginning maybe a mistake away from home again Morton um, not too sure um, but yeah okay let's see let's see how things get on here as Coogan's kicks us off Anderson now is there going to be a chance early on or is it just going to fade away to nothing yeah we've given it away <coughs> Craig Moore will now come forward great challenge there from Dixon it actually looked like he just took the player and not the ball so that was a sarcastic great challenge well certainly 10 minutes in possession wise we're controlling it we're not looking out for depth uh, pass completion 72% not bad at all all right, here's the long ball forward from the Morton keeper. Lametti picks it up, plays it into Easton. Hodge, lifted over the top. Coogan's takes it down well, turns, tries to squeeze it in. Gaston with the save, and we've got the corner. Not a bad little move. I've seen that happen quite a bit with the ball over the top. Easton takes the corner now, in towards a penalty spot, headed away. Anderson picks it back up, out to Easton, whips it in, and... Well, everyone else was running away out of the box. I don't really know what was going on there. Uh, but, yeah, it's encouraging so far. Let's see if we can actually get something to happen. There's actually not that many highlights when you watch these games, to be honest. Um, you know, let me know if, if you want to see... I think it's set to key. Yeah, it's set to key. If you want to see extended, let me know. Obviously, doing the two parts now... Um, it shortens the episodes a little bit um, but there's not really a great deal of action <laughs> in this first half um, although you can say we, we are controlling it um, it's working really well 
I think we just need to get a few more chances and um, and and just take it when it comes away. Uh, Coogan's effort, if he'd managed to score there, we would have been in an excellent position. All right, let's go. No need to change the formation. No need to change the players. Um, Lametti's maybe not playing that well. I might bring on Aaron Duke uh, at some point in the second half there. Um, and maybe Cameron Thompson for Dixon. Um, <clears throat> you can see now we've changed to exploiting the middle rather than, uh, than going wide and direct passing a little bit more. And that's why you're seeing the ball go over the top a little bit. Just trying to see if there's anything else that we can change here. Um, I don't really think there is. Well, obviously there are things we can change, but I don't think anything's that beneficial. As Morton get their first highlight chance of the game, and it's an own goal by Petrie. Beautiful. The captain, just with a glancing header and at the far post there, is not really where we wanted to be. Tiffany plays it wide. Atiyaki in acres of space. Not really a dangerous cross to deal with, to be honest. If, if Petrie had just got a full head on to that, would have been out for a corner. Um, so we've got a bit of work to do. I would say that was probably against the run of play. Um, Lametti's up to 6.6 .6 now. Might actually look... Dixon's motivated. I like it when players are like that. Um, I think I will just bring off Lametti for Duke. Um, and go with that there. Um, defensively, there's not really much. I mean, I'm not going to gain anything by taking Petrie off or anything like that. I think we just have to, to try what we've been doing um, and perhaps just go into overload. Um, I have done it a number of times. You do generate a lot of chances, but I think most of them come from outside the box. You can see the Figures are now increasing. Hmm. There's the end we can do tactically. Alright, let's tell Bruce Anderson get further forward. Maybe get a bit width going into the channels. Probably don't want to do that so much um, with Aaron Duke. Need to get him into an attacking one. Um, because I would prefer he went through the middle a little bit more um, <clears throat> I mean we could push Petrie and McMillan up McMillan actually isn't a wing back I think he's rather uncomfortable in that position to be honest uh, hmm The only other thing I'm thinking of doing, <laughs> which is a little bit wild, is potentially going to something like this. Almost like a Christmas tree formation, so quite fitting for the time of year. So we bring off Dixon for Lang, that would be, and McMillan for Scott Ferguson, and we would at least... Yeah, I don't know, I'm not sure. Sod it, we'll go for it. <laughs> Um, nothing really to lose here I mean yeah we're generating chances we're in control certainly if we'd had the first goal um, we would have been okay here's a chance here from the corner Easton headed away are we going to be too short at the back Petrie I know who's getting dropped in the next game two mistakes from Darren Petrie here will have cost us this match Mackin fires it wide of the post that was a glorious chance for him there Um Let's tell him to push forward here aggressively. I don't think the formation change is really doing a great deal. Um, we just had a poor second half and just haven't had good chances apart from Coogan's. Morton will close off the game here with a corner headed away by Duke. Duffy chases it down. Yeah, there's not going to be anything happening here. Well, I suppose the, the good thing to take away from it is we weren't outplayed. Um, just didn't create that many chances right can we get one chance here I probably should have gone 
to play Route 1 tune. Oh, it's too late now. Whoops. Easton, Duke, more than just get every man apart from one behind the ball. Two, sorry. <laughs> just saw him come in there. Anderson, come on. Can we find a chance? No. Nope. Ah, well. I mean, certainly looking at the stats, you would you would say it was against the run of play. Um, cannot fault them. Oh, dear. <laughs> that one didn't go down well. I should have just said they were unlucky. Um, yeah, that's that's a bit disappointing. Dominated possession chances. Uh, so Morton go top of the league now, I think. Yep, top of the league. Airdrie lost to Albion Rovers. 3-0, actually. Um, so, you know, it's all to play for, really. I think the key thing will be to, to take points from Morton the next time we play them, which should be at home. Uh, on the 2nd of December in terms of uh, the games that we're going to cover um, I'm thinking the next one I probably would have done Livingston but it's too close so maybe I'll do the Livingston away um, the 9th of December that's a, a big run of games you'll get a lot of highlights in episode 9 part 1 and um, yeah we'll see how it goes from there so anyway guys, um, hopefully you enjoyed that episode. I didn't really enjoy the result, but hey ho, that's how things go. Um, if you did, please leave a like and a comment. Until the next time guys, I'll see you when I see you.